Alright guys, so we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to make trading view indicators. I see a lot out there, but they just, they don't really resonate with me. So I'm going to be doing a series on how to create trading view indicators that actually kind of like do stuff. So this first one's going to be f just for beginners. So if you already know a lot of the basics, then this one just really isn't for you. But I would encourage you to look at the up and coming ones that are going to be focusing on purely strategy or alerts or all basically all the fun stuff, the more the more complicated stuff. So to get started, we're going to be going to trading view. And if you don't have an account there, you can join for free. Just click that button. Um, you can pay for it. I pay for it. It's actually a pretty solid product, but you don't have to. And that's the most important part. <laughs> so once you're here, you're going to see the main screen. And from here, you're going to want to change the ticker up in the top left over here. You're going to want to change it to something you actually follow. Now, this is the S&P 500. But for this example, we're going to be doing Bitcoin to USD because with Bitcoin, it's a 24 seven thing and it is incredibly volatile. So you're going to see a lot more action coming from your indicators as opposed to maybe like Forex or uh, S&P 500, but or or just any like stock in general. So from here, what you're going to want to do is go to the Pine Editor down here, click that, and I have this one from the tutorial already loaded, but we don't want that because we're going to make it from scratch. Also, there's a written version, so if you're someone that would rather follow along that way rather than a video, then you can always go there. I'll leave that link in the description or just pop it up on the screen somewhere. But we're going to start with naming and saving. I know it's really basic, but it it's going to come in useful. So down here, it says my script. And let's see if we can enlarge that a bit. Yeah, we can. OK, great. It says my script down here. You're going to want to change that to whatever your script's name is going to be. And we're going to call it ADX cross indicator. So we can also delete this because we won't be using it. We hit Control S, which is going to ask us to save it. I already have one with that name, so that's why it's like that. But you're going to want to save it. Generally, you're going to want to save them as the same. You're, you want to stick to the same name. So if you call it ADX cross indicator, you're going to want to save it as ADX cross indicator. The difference is when you actually save the script that is going to show up on your scripts but um what you name it here is going to show up here and eh, i know that can be kind of confusing for beginners but you'll see it'll it'll make a lot more sense so now that we got the name down we're going to want to create inputs and inputs are special variables that can be changed from the options menu the option menu looks like this so see with this um particular indicator volume you can change it really easily you don't have to go in and reprogram it so inputs are incredibly useful they can be checkboxes they can be drop down menus but mostly they're just going to be numbers so to create an input we're going to just call we're just going to create a variable called length then we're going to write input we're going to say what the default value is, 14. Then we're going to give it a title. And we're just going to call this di length. So to recap, make a variable. It's going to be called length. We're going to set it equal to an input. By default, the input's going to be 14. And it has the title of di length. Anyways, new variable. We're going to set it to an input. That input's going to be 14 as well. Title is going to be smoothing. And the last variable is going to equal lag equals input. One title is going to be lag. So now that we have all our inputs, we're going to want to create some variables. These ones are going to be predetermined, but your variables can be anything. And that's really what's going to drive the script is variables. So to create variables, we're just going to do up equals 
change hi. And what this means is we're setting the variable up to the change between the previous high and the current high. So for this one it would be it'd be nothing because <laughs> because they're about equal, but um take take like this one. So the high here was 6400, the high here 600 6300. Next we're going to be doing down equals negative change low. So same thing just opposite basically. And then true true range you don't really have to worry about because it's a bit complicated. We don't really care too much because it's more of like a predetermined um, predetermined calculation so to say. So after that we have our three variables we're going to want to make some calculations. I'm just going to do calc down here. This is just a comment. You don't have to pay attention to that. So for this part I'm just going to recommend copying and pasting because what did you do to my formula? <laughs> um, because this one, it's it's more of something that y you don't really. It doesn't really matter. This is just a formula. It's like uh, in high school when you calculated velocity. I mean, we, it's not it's not terribly important. And we're just gonna copy and paste this too, and I don't know why my editor is making those red things, but yeah, definitely not needed. So I'm gonna put this calc thing in the description. You're just gonna wanna copy and paste because it's basically just a bunch of formulas. And it's kind of ironic that I'm doing such a uh, complicated indicator for the beginner tutorial, but I mean, it's copy and paste, like some mathematician has created this for us previously, so we don't have to do it, which is pretty great for us. So now we get to the last part, which is actually plotting the calculations onto the chart. So all this hard work, we're going to put it on the chart. So to do that, we need to plot, use the plot function, it's just plot parentheses. We're going to plot the variable ADX, we're going to plot this, and comma, we're going to give it a title. Title doesn't matter too much, but we're just going to be extra thorough today. <laughs> Style equals line. And lastly, last argument is going to be color, and we're just going to blue. Make it simple. We're going to hit save, and it is mad. Oh have an error. I'm gonna fix that for the copy and paste. <laughs> so if your indicator works you won't get these red um, these red error messages so again we're just gonna hit save and the moment of truth add to the chart. So now we've added it to the chart so it's pretty much done I mean it's added to the chart it's doing what it needs to do so if you're just starting and you want a really good indicator, definitely recommend the uh, ADX. And But that really is just kind of the basics. So really all you need is um, you need the inputs and the plot. And everything in between is just comes down to logic and basic math. I mean, you could really put anything in here. If you guys have any questions, comments, or whatever, um, if you have any questions about Pine in general, I could probably answer it because I've kind of lived on Pine for longer than I want to admit. The next tutorial, I'll be going over strategies and alerts, which is really what, um, what everyone wants to know is how do I make a strategy and backtest it. How do I increase profit factor, reduce drawdown, good stuff like that. Um, I'll be going over that in the future. Because really that's way more fun than uh, what we're doing here today. But yeah, again, if anyone has any questions, comments, I'll be sure to answer them. Just leave them down below. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.